Hello, Epic 7, and welcome to a summer of weaponized monetization here in Epic 7. How you guys liking 10 limited units in a two month period of time? Yeah, we're all feeling the pinch pretty hard on this, and hopefully this is just growing pains with the new China server and not the uh, new standard of the way things are going to be. Keep sending in your feedback, treat the community managers nicely, they're on our side. But the purpose of today's video is I'm here to help you navigate the ocean of limited banners that are heading our direction and help you uh, spend your resources where best possible. Who to pick, not who not to pull for, what units are useful and where. After maintenance is complete, we will be staring down two Landy banners. The RGB Green Limited Unit Landy and her Artifact Wall of Order, as well as her ML version Naval Captain Landy, who I like calling Melandy. Please don't call her Candy, okay? Just, just do me a favor. Don't, don't do it. Anyway, let's talk about Green Landy first. Um, Wall of Order as an artifact might be making somewhat of a small comeback. I have some seen some people running it on Landy, especially with Last Rider Kral being out there. Its chance to proc and give Gab is pretty high. It's just really hard to value that artifact over Guiding Light, but it's not a terrible artifact. I'm not sure it's worth spending powder on. I would recommend against it. As for Green Landy herself, she's a powerhouse unit. She has always been at least usable, if not meta, in RTA. And she survived that way through multiple seasons. She's one of the few units that's seen relatively consistent use in every season of RTA. And she's also very, very good in PvE. Clearing abyss floors, doing um, advent side stories, all around solid unit. If you've got the resources, she's a viable pickup, but she is not a collaboration unit. So if you're limited on resources, you may want to pass on her. I guarantee you within the next probably six to eight weeks, we'll be staring down a custom limited banner and you can pick her and summon for her then if you still decide you need her. If you've got the resources, she's a great pickup, but I'm putting her low down on the list of priorities just because of what we're staring down here in the near future. As for pulling on her banner just to get imprints for Naval Captain Landy, you better be really comfortable with swiping your credit card in a gotcha game to, to go that deep. With all that we've got coming up and what's I think is down the road for us. I, I don't recommend that just for a few extra attack points on your ML unit. Uh, I think you pull Landy because you want Landy and she's a good unit to have, not because you want to feed her into Moonlight Landy. I guarantee you within the next, uh, I'd say eight to 10 weeks minimum, we'll see a custom summon banner where you can stick Landy on there, and if you survive all this with resources intact, you can pull for duplicate Landys there if you really want to imprint. Now, on the 10th, we get the Guilty Gear collaboration, the Uber collaboration that looks like it's going to include every single Guilty Gear unit. One would assume that because Soul Bad Guy was a free unit every single time they've done a Guilty Gear collaboration, that he'll continue to be a free unit and accessible through the story. So we'll, uh, we'll skip on him for now. What we do know is they're running a custom style banner. Now the way the custom style banners work is you select three units from the pool of available units. And then you can do your summons. And if you get a five star, it's guaranteed to be one of those units. If you get an artifact, you can still get off banner artifacts, unfortunately, but hopefully you get one of the uh, artifacts randomly from the three units you're summoning for. So it seems like a bit of a hodgepodge mess, but every single summon you do gets you one coin. And then there's a shop, and in that shop you can spend 100 coins to buy an artifact, or 120 coins to buy a unit of choice. So the goal is, you do 120 summons, and hopefully in that 120 summons you get one or two of the units that you're looking for, and then you can use your coins to buy the third unit or the artifact you're chasing after. It does let you hyper-focus three units and ideally get some. Now, I don't know if that's exactly the way the group summon's going to work this time around. For all I know, the group summon will include all of the Guilty Gear units, and you don't have to select three and leave out the others, but we'll have to see how that pans out on the 10th. Hopefully we'll get more information on that as we go. But let's talk about 
the Guilty Gear units, how usable they still are, and whether or not you should pull for them. First, let's talk about Dizzy. Dizzy is a really nice unit. She's got AoE on all of her skills. Her S3 debuffs even on a miss, which is kind of unique. Other than artifacts, nobody else can stick debuffs on a miss that I can think of. But her kit is a little outdated. She used to be the terror of Arena. She was really good in PvP, but her kit's fallen off. She's not fast enough to do what needs to be done. She's not tanky enough to survive. She doesn't do enough damage. And there's just so much anti-control now with units like Edward and even Champion Zerato and units that cleanse and units that punish you for doing AoE attacks like uh, Last Rider Crow, Angel of Light Angelica. She's not finding a lot of playability nowadays. She does have some use in PvE. She's really good in climbing the abyss. Um, makes that a lot easier. And she's she used to have some use in Wyvern in slow teams but nobody runs slow wyvern anymore and even in the abyss she is replaceable with a lot of modern units uh, aria jumps to mind so i uh my advice is don't pull for dizzy unless you just really really like the unit now of course always pull for a unit that you just really love the look feel and you're a fan you just want the unit because of the unit I, I can't fault you for that, but we're just talking about raw usability and importance of the unit. And right now, Dizzy's pretty close to the bottom of the tier. Very skippable unit. Now let's talk about Biken for a minute. Biken got famous for being the easiest way to one-shot Banshee. And she is, in fact, still the easiest way to one-shot Banshee. Now, should you pull her for that use? Um... There are a lot of ways to one-shot Banshee. There'll be a link in the video description for my video on how to one-shot Banshee, and there are several options other than Biken. In fact, a few weeks from now when the ReZero collab reruns, you'll get one of the options for free. A unit called Ram, great at one-shotting Banshee. Uh, you can one-shot Banshee with Euphine. You can one-shot Banshee with Green Bologna. You can one-shot Banshee with Urvalen. You can one-shot Banshee with a two-star fodder character. Now each of these options takes substantially better gear than Biken. Nobody is as easy to gear. You can put the free, I just started the game gear on Biken and one shot Manshee, but does that make it enough to make her worth pulling? I mean, if you're desperate to farm Banshee and, and you just cannot gear any of the other options, then maybe you go ahead and grab her. Maybe you put her in your custom pool and maybe you hope to pick one, but, uh, I rate her also pretty low on value. Only you can make this decision whether or not having the easiest Banshee one-shot is better than having a slightly harder to build Banshee one-shot. I, I think unless you're struggling for gear, she's a pass. Now the next unit on the list we're gonna talk about is Elfelt. Elfelt used to be fan-freaking-tastic in PvP. Um, her usage has fallen off quite a bit. The style of cleave she does is punished now quite a bit still a good unit but with cleave being really on its way out and struggling so hard right now i can't in good conscience recommend pulling elfelt even though she was such a good unit back in the day i put slates in her i would take a pass honestly she's got almost no use in pve either so other than the occasional um, arena usage, you're not going to find many places to use Elfelt now. Some people will want to pull for Elfelt to get at the Misconfile artifact, but even the Misconfile artifact has kind of fallen away in its usability. It's one of the only artifacts that applies defense break, which is really nice, but even that artifact is not as usable as it once was. So I would pass on Elfelt too, unless you are swimming in resources or just really love the unit. And of course, the one everybody talks about, Jacko. Everybody's been who's played RTA has been cleaved by Jacko at some point in time. It was the um, most toxic style of cleave to fight against for several months, and it's put her really high up on a lot of people's lists of units to get. I still don't think she's that important. Of all of the Guilty Gear units, she is probably the best one to get, and I'd still pass on it. And I know, I've just said all the units, pass on all of them, none of them worth getting, and that's kind of the honest truth. With what we've got coming up, you can totally sleep on this entire banner. Um, 
And Jacko Cleave is still a thing, but Cleave is on its way out, and, and Melandi is probably going to be the nail in Cleave's coffin, so I would recommend skipping the entire Guilty Gear banner. Just don't pull any of them, sack it, and save your resources for the ReZero banner and what's to come after. I think even if you don't have any of these units, you can safely pass on all of them. Now, I'm sure I'll get some comments to the contrary on that, and this is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's the right opinion or the best opinion, but I'm saying it's my opinion, and that's what you came here to hear. The uh, rate and speed at which things are hitting us, unless you're really willing to whip out that credit card, it's too much too fast, and this is one to skip. All these units have very dated kits. They are... Uh, win more units, there are better options than those units, and other than cleaving with Jacko, none of them really have modern uses. And, and like I said, Jacko cleave in a bad spot. And Jacko's artifact is also really nice, it's basically Kaladra for warriors, but there's a lot of really nice warrior artifacts out there now. Everything from Golden Rose to Sigurd Scythe to, to Lethe's artifact, there's a lot of options, Draco Plate. It's not as important of an artifact as a lot of people make it out to be. Okay, so now let's talk about what happens on the 17th. We get another collab. After Guilty Gear's collab gets up and running, we will run into the ReZero collab. On the ReZero banner, you will probably get RAM for free. Always have in the past, so I assume by doing the story you will get the Ram unit for free, and she is a fantastic Banshee unit. She takes better gear than Biken, but she can still do the job, um, especially if you run her with Lucy. Covered in the video, in the description. Now let's talk about the two headliners. We've got the Ice Warrior Rem, and we've got the Ice Soul Weaver Amelia. They flip flop on who's better. Sometimes Rem is an unstoppable menace, sometimes Amelia is the best unit in the game, and it really is tough to pigeonhole which is better than the other. Uh, Rem gives you access to one of the fastest, cleanest, highest success rate Wyvern one-shots out there that doesn't involve ridiculous whale tier gear. Rem is great at shutting down Jacko for the people that pulled Jacko thinking they can cleave you with them. You waited and pulled Rem, and now those guys can uh, can get isekai into another world. Rem's artifact is a decent artifact. It's a stat stick. Again, it's a warrior artifact, and lately we've picked up a lot of better warrior alternatives, but still, there's nothing wrong with grabbing Rem's artifact with Rem. Unlike the Guilty Gear units, Rem and her artifact are both actually high value, so that's a pretty good banner to pull on. Now let's talk about Amelia. Amelia was arguably one of, if not the best Soul Weavers in the game for a long time. Her value has dropped off quite a bit since Soul Weavers lost the speed boost in RTA, but she's one of the few Soul Weavers that still sees occasional pick in, in RTA that's I should say one of the aggro style soul weavers, not like a you know, Destina. She has got a attack boost on her S2 as well as a 50% CR push. So she's kind of like Doris with a CR push in that regard. She gives barriers on her S3, she cleanses. And her artifact, Guardian Ice Crystal, is arguably one of the best soul weaver artifacts in the game. So I think of all the units, I would recommend pulling for Rem and Amelia first. As to which one you pick, it's hard to say. They both have really good PvE use and PvP use. I think you know, Rem is basically counter cleave for PvP and is used for Wyvern one shot. Amelia is used in a lot of PvE places, from the Abyss to the Labyrinth to Advent stuff. She brings a lot of utility to the table, survivability, attack buffs, cleanses, a lot of things you need in PvE, as well as being usable in PvP, situations like uh, Guild Wars, RTA, uh, even normal arena. So I guess this is how I rank them. If you can only pull one banner, you pull on Amelia's. If you can somehow swing two banners, you get Amelia and Rem. If you can somehow pull off three banners, you get Amelia, you get Rem, and then you, you load up the custom Guilty Gear summon, and if it's only a three-unit summon, I think you grab 
I think for the three units, you pick uh, Jacko, Biken, and the third spot can either be Dizzy or Elfelt, depending on which one you like better. I think Elfelt's more usable, but some people really like Dizzy. Or you use that third summon and you wait. Because I'm telling you, this isn't the end of it. It looks like they're trying to catch up the China server. We've got a Slime collab rerun to do for them. We've got a Full Metal Alchemist collab rerun that should be coming out sometime in, in the uh, late fall, early winter. There's likely going to be an Espa collab rerun, and that's four limited units. That'll probably happen before December. And don't forget the art contest winner, the uh, Lilius unit. That'll be a limited unit. That usually rolls out somewhere around Christmas, but it may be earlier. And we'll probably see uh, a custom triple banner of your own, much like the Guilty Gear banner, but you get to pick any three units in the game, limited or not, everything's on there except collabs, and you'll be able to load up any three units you want into that banner and summon on that, and that's a good one, because you've got the whole gambit of every unit in the game that's not a collab unit or an ML unit that you can put on that banner and summon for, so everybody wants to save up for that. So those banners are usually 10 to 12 months apart, and the last one was about eight months ago, so that's on the horizon too. So you may even want to consider, if you can pull three, you just get Rem and Amelia, and you sit on that third because you never know what's right around the corner. They're, they're chasing you down hard, guys. Keep your chins up and be careful what you spend. Epic 7 has always been a game of resource management, and the less willing to swipe you are, the more important managing your resources is, the more important it is to think what's coming down the road, to look at the past, to look at rerun patterns, and to try to predict what's coming so that you don't spend your resources and then have buyer's remorse when something better comes the very next week. I hope this review has helped you uh, navigate the monetization that's hit us here. Be really careful about your Sky Stones, guys. Hoochie Shop is out. A lot of packs are hitting the floor. Looks like we're rolling into a bunch of hunt buffs as well. And uh, Anniversary is on August 31st, so you know there's going to be things to buy and things to do then as well. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section. If you'd like to talk directly with me, jump in my Discord, link in the description. And as always, everybody, like and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.